Sweet. The third annual Freshman Show and Seniors Festival. Mm -hmm. This is um, one of the longtime favorites of our stroll festival, and that is Steam Freshman. Uh, as we go along, I'll be doing a little bit of commentary about the machine itself and about the process of threshing back in the old days. So uh, sit back and enjoy. Well, have fun. The 
Philippines represented a tremendous success to the farmers of the day. 
During the late 1800s, when pioneers began to travel to the area, which was later to become the province of Saskatchewan, they found a land that was strange to them. Once roamed only by buffalo, the First Nations and trappers, this new home had few of the comforts of which many of the homesteaders had been accustomed to. It became necessary to adjust to a life of loneliness, hard work, and primitive living conditions. For food, these early settlers couldn't simply go to the store as we do today. The ground had to be tilled and seeded so that grains and vegetables could be grown. The main cash crop raised by pioneers in the prairies was wheat. An equal amount of oats was raised for food for the horses. During the spring, which was late April to early May, the farmer would plant the seeds. He would then have to wait, hoping that the rain would fall, that the sun would shine, and that the insects or hail would not destroy the crop. In the late August or early September days, the crop would be ripe and ready for harvesting. Harvesting is probably the highlight of any farm year, the time when all the hard work pays off. Harvesting during the early years was a family and later a community undertaking. The cooperative spirit was evident, as no one individual could handle all the tasks alone. There was a social side to harvesting as well as a technical side, and we will speak of both of these aspects. The grain has to be cut. 100 years ago, this was all done by hand. The earliest tool that was used to cut was the sickle. By this method, the farmer holds the sickle in one hand, okay, cutting through a handful really. of stalks which he has secured with his other hand. The cut grain was then gathered together into bunches and tied together with stalks of wheat into sheaves. This was slow and back-breaking work, and on center. average, only one half acre could be cut per day with the use of this tool. So demonstrating the sickle this afternoon, we have Jace Hansen. Let's give Jason Matthew a hand. Thanks, guys. To the side, an apparatus called a cradle was attached. The cradle was formed in the shape of long, wooden curving fingers which caught the grain as it was cut. After each stroke, the cradle became sufficiently full of wheat so that it could be deposited in a row. Bunches were laid in rows down the field so that the work of binding the grain into sheaves became easier and required considerably less time. On the cradle sides today is Louis Lahosky. as an improvement upon the reaper. This horse-drawn apparatus both cut the stalks of grain and bound them into sheaves or bundles of stout twine securely knotted. The automatic binding of grain was another labor-saving device since only one person was required to operate the binder. The early binders were usually pulled by four horses. On a very large farm, it would not be unusual to see as many as eight outfits operating at the same time. And in just a moment, you will see our horses with the binder ready to enter the field. These folks are from Motherwell Homestead at Abernethy. We have Sheldon Matsala and Crystal Baxter. The horses on the unit are Scooby and Shaggy and Scrinchy and Scrunchy. And they are the working teams at Motherwell Homestead. We very much appreciate them coming out to our Threshold Show and Seniors Festival every year. Let's sit back and enjoy once they enter the field. Wouldn't you have the chance to make a piece of apple pie and <laughs> nobody's looking for a piece of cake? <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, he's going to take his time in the end of the tip the way okay. the parents should, right? Now we have the video sign, maybe we'll learn this and do it next year. <laughs> No, that's good. The baby taking part. Yeah, pretty good guys. Just we'll give these guys some encouragement as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they're driving. <laughs> oh, I made a hole in my top. I couldn't do that.
I'm a 